Now, we'll calculate the projectile's velocity using a different method. To do this, we'll move the pendulum arm out of the way and launch the projectile into free space. We'll launch the ball into a catch box. The flight path will give us all the information we need to calculate the projectile's velocity. For our calculations, we'll need two values. The horizontal distance the projectile travels, which we will call range, and its height above ground level, which we will call height. As you might have guessed, the projectile will follow a parabolic trajectory. In other words, as it moves forward, it is being pulled towards Earth under the influence of gravity. Parabolic trajectories can be separated into their two components. We will do that here. It makes many physics problems easier to solve. Let's first consider the horizontal component. Notice that this launch mechanism is neither tilted up nor down. It is completely horizontal. And what does this mean for our experiment? This means that upon launch, the projectile's initial velocity only has a horizontal component. We are interested in solving for the projectile's initial velocity, which we have just determined has only a horizontal component. So how do we define velocity? Velocity is simply defined as the distance traveled divided by the time it takes to get there. Now we have determined that we will call the distance traveled in the horizontal direction the range. And so I will use r, and then we divided by t, and this is our definition of the velocity we are trying to solve for. If we could find the time in flight, we could solve for our initial velocity. To find the time in flight, we will make use of the vertical component of velocity and one of our kinematic equations, which states that the distance traveled, which in the vertical direction is height, and I will use h, is equal to 1 half times the acceleration times time squared. Now, I've established that the acceleration is due to gravity, so I will rewrite our expression as h equals 1 half gt squared. Now we'll do some simple algebraic manipulations to solve for t. We will do so by multiplying both sides by 2, which will cancel out the 1 half, and dividing both sides by g, which will cancel out the g. And we will have 2h over g equals t squared. Taking the square root of both sides, we will have an expression for t as t equals the square root of 2h over g. I'll go back to my first expression, velocity equals r over t, and substitute in my new expression for t. So velocity equals the range divided by the square root of 2 times the height divided by g. And this is how we will solve for the projectile's initial velocity. Now that we've calculated the projectile's velocity using a second method, you will want to compare your two values. To do so, you will compute the percent difference, which is simply the difference over the average. Your instructor will give you some specific details on how to do so. Now I'd like to talk about a few of the experimental procedures. To measure the range, we'll launch the ball into a catch box. On the catch box, we will put a piece of carbon paper, and which will make marks on the paper when the ball strikes it, like so. You will do this five times, measure the distance to the edge of the paper, and take the average of those five distances. Then you will need to measure the distance from the launch point to the edge of the catch box. To do so, you might want to make use of this plumb bob, which is simply a weight on a string. And this will allow you to determine where the projectile is being launched from, and you can make a mark on the floor with a piece of tape, and then just use a meter stick to measure the distance from there to the edge of the catch box.